Uh, let's do an actual real video for a change. Won't that be something? <laughs> Bet you didn't see that coming. Uh, it's still not an old computer video. Uh, I need to to clean my bench off as you can see so let's record this first and then i'll clean the bench off but here's the the fta 97 i did a a video or two about this that i published and um, a bunch of other stuff that i haven't published yet some of which may uh may end up uh getting tacked onto this video somewhere i don't know but in any case um this is an all-band, all-mode radio. It uh, it goes all the way from uh, 160 meters um, up to uh, 440 megahertz. Um, AM, FM, single sideband, CW. Um, it's got uh, some provisions to make it a little easier to hook uh, digital stuff up to it as well. Uh, this is the newest radio I own. Um, if you've watched any of the previous radio videos, you've probably realized that I'm kind of in a vintage gear. But um, I wanted something portable uh, that I could, you know, set up as like a grab-and-go thing. And, um, you know, as much as I like vintage radios, um, sometimes they can be a little flaky. <laughs> um, and uh, I, I needed a, like a, um, a VHF rig for inside as well. Um, I've got VHF rigs in all the trucks and stuff, but uh, I, don't, I don't have one in the house. I've just got HF stuff in the house. So um, the, I paid a little too much for it, but these things are still in pretty high demand. They're, um, they're pretty good radio. And the nice thing about the Yezus is... Um, when you when you modify them to free band, they cover a lot of frequencies. I mean, this thing will transmit many places, um, and I'll I'll may I've I've got some stuff recorded for how to mod these uh, for like free banding use. Uh, I'll post those some other time. Um, but yeah, it's coming along. Um, I had uh, one set of these. Um, one set of these rails on it, uh, but the problem was you could either f point them frontwards or backwards, so it either protected the, the front panel, uh, but not the connectors on the back, or vice versa. And I fucked around um, trying to make some extension uh, extension pieces for it out of steel. These are made out of aluminum, and they were heavy and kind of shitty and didn't, didn't turn out <coughs> quite like I wanted, so... I ended up just uh, buying another set of these uh, rails and then trimming them um, so that they didn't interfere with the back and then just uh, getting some longer screws and screwing the two rails on top of each other so I had both front and back protection. It's kind of nice. It gives you a little more room to hold on to the handle there too. So, State of the art facilities. And you thought the computer room was bad. Surely somewhere in all of that shit is something I can use for protective panels for that radio. Hmm. <laughs> Come at me, Osha man. Oh. I don't believe I can do this one handed. Well, that's not perfectly straight, but is anyone? Based on the texture of these rails, my supposition is that. They are either uh, MIM or cast aluminum. Based on the weight, I'm going to guess cast aluminum. But either way, uh, that means it would be impossible to weld onto it. Um, 
So um, the idea here is to cut these plates that go underneath and this will extend off the back of the radio and protect the uh, connectors in the back and the shit that's plugged into them when I'm rolling the thing around. Um, there is a hole here, but uh, when we line the thing upright, the hole gets covered up so we can forget that it's there. We can call that a, a lightning hole. Yeah, that is a little heavier than I'd like. Um, I guess I am going to have to make lightning cuts. I'm going to drill all of my uh, concave radiuses uh, and pilot holes for the uh, screw holes before I start uh, making that lightning cut. You gotta punch each place you're gonna drill with a center, center punch uh, to keep the drill bit from chattering when you start. Especially with that high quality Harbor Freight drill press over there that's 50 years old. Of course, uh, they won't quite exactly be centered, but uh, I'll drill the radiuses with a smaller bit and then cut it. And then we'll try to finish it with a file if they're not quite just so. Look at that thing chattering there. What a piece of shit, Chris. But uh, anybody with an ounce of sense would do this on a mill probably, but I don't have a mill, so here we go. Mmm, good enough for who it's for. Well, I think the lightning cuts may have been a mistake. Uh, I'm going to put it on the radio and see how it looks. I don't think it'll be strong enough, though. That metal's softer than I thought. Yeah, I can tell this is going to be too flimsy here. I should have... I should have just left it whole. It wasn't that much heavier. Eh. Oh, well. I hunted all over eBay looking for another set of these rails and finally discovered that uh, <coughs> the manufacturer still sells them. <laughs> so, uh, I just bought another set there. <coughs> And they're a little bit more uh, than I wanted to pay, but uh, cheaper than uh, fixing the connectors on the back of the radio when they get fucked up or the knobs on the front. So I guess it's worthwhile. The pr problem with this plan, though, is set these on top of each other. That's how I'm going to put them on there. So I've got something in both the front and the back and then use longer screws. But uh, these, um, these uh, eyelets here for clipping a strap to... Uh, they poke up enough that it keeps them from laying flat together, and uh, <coughs> I'm going to have to shave a little bit off the back of the uh, the other set, too, so that they'll go back go on here, but I can do that with a file uh, once I get back up to the house. Um, let's see if that ram can fly over there and hit me in the teeth. That'd be a hell of a trick, wouldn't it? This old uh, shop press isn't exactly uh, the world's greatest, if you hadn't noticed. Um, it looks a little, it looks a little cheese ball, but uh, I, uh, I like, uh, I like the way it turned out. I just need to put a little paint on that end or something where I, where I cut those rails off. Here's the back. Um, this is where the HF antenna connects, and I've got this little. Uh, factory right angle coax pigtail going over here to the auto tuner um, and then it comes out into a uh, uh, UHF to um, BNC adapter and I've got this little uh, dirt dirt uh, cover thing on there to keep it from getting shit in it so the the idea here is you know we make like a, um, a portable like a uh, random long wire or something that we can throw over tree branches when we're in like a a portable situation and then it'll just plug in there if we're uh, operating HF um, and there's a similar thing here this is an HT antenna um, uh, I can't see over the phone but it's uh, it's it's plugged into uh, another one of these uh, right angle uh, UHF to BNC connectors so it can just be uh, installed on there and extended um, and the power on the radio turned down to 10 watts because so that's all the antenna uh, is supposedly rated for. Um, then you can just operate uh, one, 144 and 440, you know, without uh, without an external antenna. The, the problem is, um, I think this is a fake. It's pretty amazing when, uh, when the Chinese um, 
fake, already cheap uh, Taiwanese uh, dual band antennas. <laughs> but, uh, um, so um, when you use these HT antennas on on a on a base station rig like this, you have to um, you have to install a counterpoise, which would be like a ground wire attached here, right? Um, is would be the easiest way to do it. Because uh, when when you have these on an HT, uh, you the operator holding on to the the handy talkie um, act as the counterpoise, right? Uh, but when you're operating like this, there is no counterpoise, so you've got to just hang a grounded wire off of here for this radiating element to work against. Um, and if you don't do that, you have um, shitty high SWR on these HT antennas when you try to use them on a base station rig like this. But even doing that, um, I took that uh, long wire receive loop, the thing that we've got hanging around the fence out there, um, and I hooked it up to this thing as the counterpoise, and I still get a uh, standing wave ratio that's high enough to uh, kick the transmitter off in this thing uh, when trying to use this antenna, uh, which is what makes me think it's a fake, because uh, uh, apparently the fakes don't work where the fuck, and um, the uh, looking at it a little closer, the um, the sticker that's on it doesn't look exactly like the stickers on the genuine ones. So that's what I get for buying the cheapest possible antenna off of eBay or something, I guess. Uh, I guess uh, I've, I've got some uh, rubber duckies, I think, somewhere that have BNC connectors on them for 2-meter uh, HTs. I'll, I'll try one of those on there at, like, 5 watts or something and see if uh, see if I still have an, an SWR problem. Because if that happens, then maybe, maybe the problems with this uh, right-angle thing or something like that. I don't know. That's an issue that I need to address. Um, and also, one of the biggest annoyances with this radio, everything else has, has turned out pretty good here. It'll be protected by these rails when it gets set on its ass, pointing straight up in the air. Except for this uh, this control cable for the auto tuner that uh, plugs between these serial ports. It uses a mini DIN 8 connector. Um, and uh, I hate those connectors for this kind of usage because they're not very robust. And they stick way out, and there just isn't really any good way to do this. Um, and I think there are only uh, three or four lines that are used on these connectors to control the auto tuner anyway. Uh, so I may just um, add something that comes out of one of these vents in the back of the radio uh, that hooks onto this uh, inside and put a different connector on this thing. Uh, so that it'll be a little more robust. Um, or maybe I can run it out over here somewhere so the wire's pretty short. Less chance of it snagging on something. I don't know. Anyway, that's a that's an annoyance with these radios when they're used for portable use and you don't want to take everything apart and put it back together every time. So, um, also, this thing... Uh, this thing take will take batteries, optionally. They, they go into the bottom of the radio and... Uh, Underneath of this cover, I won't take it off for you right now, but basically this whole area is about an inch and a half deep. Um, and you can put, there were two factory battery packs that you could put in here. They were nickel metal hydride packs. They're not made anymore. Um, you can get a Chinese replacement, but apparently they're shitty. So what I want to do is uh, replace, is make my own uh, 18650 lithium ion packs for this thing, two of them. Um, There'll be like uh, four in series, uh, and then two blocks of four in series wired in parallel uh, for each pack. Um, and then down the center, I think there is, will be enough of a space that I can uh, put my ch the four charge controllers that will be required for that um, in there, uh, in between them. And then I'll have to power the charge part of it off of uh, about 17 volts, 16.8 volts to be exact. <laughs> um, and this thing, uh, the radio power supply maxes out, uh, before the thing shuts itself down at, uh, 15 volts. So, um, that's a little bit of an issue, um, but we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but I, I think what I'll do is, if it'll fit in here, um, I'll put a little 5 amp, uh, boost converter in here, um, just to power the, uh, um, battery charging controllers off of the 13.8 volt supply or 12.5 because that's what the, my, what my power supply uh, turns up to at, at the highest. Um, and then uh, 
all the battery charging and shit will happen magically off of this single uh, single 12 volt supply and I'll just make a little pigtail that hangs off of here or maybe a longer one. Maybe. No, it'll have to be a pretty short one because I don't want shit hanging off of this one. I'm trying to move it around uh, that will just have a couple of like uh, power poles on it or something. And then I'll have <coughs> a larger jumper cable that comes from there, longer I should say, and goes to the power supply. So this is going to be the power supply. Ammo box. I'm going to use a different one. That one's just for reference. Old meter head. This is going to be our faceplate. Totally OSHA approved. Some progress made. It, it's supposed to mount in an ammo can, but I don't know what I did with the ammo can. Uh, yeah, here's a... This is just one that I've been using for... Uh, uh, prototyping purposes. I'm going to use a little bit nicer one when I actually make it, but uh, this uh, this piece here is the corner of an old uh, uh, meter head box from an old electrical service off of one of the barns that I cut out on the bandsaw um, and then drilled for uh, for some fans. And the idea here is, let me get this shit out of here so I can show you. This thing will just friction fit down in to the ammo can uh, about like that. I, I may have to trim it a little more to make it a little shorter. I'm not sure yet. Um, and then I've got these uh, low profile fan unit things that I've uh, fixed up that'll go over top of these um, these holes that I've cut. They'll, they'll sit down flush um, when they're done. Here's Here's one. That, here's a cover that's not attached to anything. The fan will go underneath, and then the cover will be on top like that. Two of them. One will be an intake, and one will be an outlet. Um, but that, that'll cover up some of my shitty cutting there. And then uh, up here on top, um, I'll mount this uh, this uh, power connector right here. And then I've got this lighted rocker switch that I'll cut a hole for right here. And then I'll, uh, I've got to get them yet. I'll put a couple of panel mount uh, power pole connectors right here um, for plugging the uh, the radio into it. And it'll supply 12 and a half volts. This, uh, this is a, a 30 amp um, 12 volt switching power supply, just a Chinesium one um, that'll go inside of here. Um, and then um, like the... Uh, the AC cable and the uh, the 12 volt cable, I'll be able to kind of coil them up in the top here, and then um, close the ammo can. And it'll since this is friction fit, and I won't be cutting any holes in it, um, it'll all be waterproof, um, and that'll be good. And this will just be the AC power supply that I can drag around, um, and I can also fix up something to you know, with a couple of clips on it or something, so I can power off of like. Uh, car and boat batteries when necessary and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So um, I, th I think that'll make a neat little uh, neat little waterproof power supply. I was gonna I was gonna put more 18650 cells inside of this thing, uh, but I think it'll just um, it, it, it'll block the airflow too much. I want to make sure that shitty Chinesium power supply stays cool. Uh, but I'll, I'll put like a cardboard divider in here. The power supply will mount in there somewhere down in here. Um, and it's got those, you know, holes in it there for ventilation, but I'll, I'll put like a cardboard divider in here so that the intake air is forced through the power supply instead of just going around on top of it and not going through, you know, uh, but it'll, it'll be forced through the power supply and then out the, the exhaust fan. So it, it should have good airflow. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's the plan for all of that, and then when the the radio, like the way its feet are and stuff, it'll sit like right on top of this uh, this power supply unit for uh, for base station use, and I can plug my antennas into <coughs> those connectors. And uh, one uh, one beef I have is uh, it uses uh, an RJ45 connector for the microphone instead of a four pin microphone jack, which is kind of annoying because I like to use four pin mic jacks, but uh, I can make uh, I can make an adapter for that. I think. Um, oh, that's a female connector. I know I've got a male one here somewhere. Yeah, I'll just take a take one of these and wire it to the end of this piece of Ethernet cable, and then uh, then I'll be able to use my all my four-pin mics on it. You know what I'm saying? 
uh, it'll be a, a fun video when we rebuild that, uh, that D104 too. Anyway, uh, so yeah, finally a real video with actual content. Radio instead of old computers, sorry about that, but, uh, we'll do some old computer shit soon, I promise. Uh, I think, uh, I can probably, uh, probably do some stuff about Dan Lawrence's D&D, &D, uh, while I'm finishing up getting this room unfuckedified, and then we can get back into some, like, fun hardware stuff. All right. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.